Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to run you through Alpha Destiny's novice program. Now, I've seen quite a few people post videos of them running this program, you know, on YouTube, but they're not really running the same exercise variations that Alex recommends. So here's this program for those of you who haven't seen it. Right away, you'll see that there are three exercises that, you know, they have different variations that you'll normally see in other programs like starting strength or strong lifts. And these are the box squat, the trap bar deadlift, and the floor press. And in these videos that I've seen on YouTube of people running Alex's program, they don't do these variations, you know, for whatever reason. And I know if you read the Q&A on Alex's website, he'll say that you can do the regular squat or the regular deadlift, but I really recommend against it. It's really gonna impede your recovery, like he's saying, and it's just gonna keep you from, you know, stalling early and from stalling really often. So I really recommend that you stick to the exercise variations that are on Alex's program. And these are the exercise variations that I'll be running in this video. So something to take into account before we get into this commentary is that I'm currently in a calorie deficit, trying to lose a little bit of body fat, and this is because right now I'm rocking around 20% and I don't have enough muscle mass to really look good. You know, Alex, he's at 20% body fat, but you know, you can still kind of see his abs and that's because he has a lot of muscle mass. Me on the other hand, not so much. But, you know, this is going to affect, you know, how I run this program. So I'll go into more detail in the commentary. And if you guys are more interested in, you know, how I calculate my macros and my calories and what my plan is for this, like, mini diet, I'm not going to diet for that long, maybe like one or two months, then stay tuned till the end of the video and I'll cover it then. All right, so let's get straight into the workout. All right, guys, so starting off this commentary with some box squats done box squats one other time but the bench I was using was too high I think this bench is a pretty good height you'll see here um, I really feel like the crease of my hip is in line with my knees as you see here my first couple reps were kind of just almost touch and go I wasn't really sitting back completely but I was able to adjust and you know as you can see performing them correctly sitting back all the way so right now I'm using 275 pounds felt pretty good um, I could definitely could have done more. I feel like my lower body is definitely more in that intermediate stage, but you know I don't want to start with some really heavy weight, especially right now that I'm in a deficit. You know, right now I'm feeling good because last night I had a pretty good meal. You know, I I wasn't in a calorie deficit yesterday, so I have quite a bit of energy today. But as you guys will see here, you know I I'm pretty sure that the crease in my hip is pretty good. And let me know what you guys think, Alex, if you're watching this video. Let me know what you think. Um, like I was saying, you know, I've ran novice programs before in the past, you know, like 5x5, five 3x5, five, five, and the most I got to was about 265 pounds for three sets of five, and I just kept stalling at that point. Eventually, I started doing, you know, three reps instead of five reps, which, you know, it's not the best. I was doing like 3 by 3s and but even then, I still kept stalling. So that's why I think that the box squat is really going to help in that respect. You know, it's going to keep me from stalling too early and from stalling, you know, too often. I was running an intermediate program for a little while after I kept stalling. I got frustrated and I started working out with a friend at the gym. And I made some progress, you know, I made some pretty good progress. But I definitely think I could have made more progress if I had just stuck you know, with a linear program, um, especially if I had done Alex's program. Now, these box squats were pretty tough. I know they look pretty easy, you know, you seeing me do 275, but those last, like, two reps out of the five were really hard. Um, like Alex was saying, you know, those box squats really focus on, you know, you being explosive and using that posterior chain, and I could definitely feel that. So now, moving on to the floor press. This is my first time doing the floor press, and I'm using 155 pounds right here. Like I was saying, my bench is really weak. And you'll notice here, I'm kind of doing touch and go for this first set. You know, I'm, I'm just a noob. Um, I'll fix that in the next couple of sets. Um, yeah, first time doing the movement, you know, I realized like halfway through, oh, I probably should have been pausing a little bit longer at the bottom. So that's what I did. Um, you know, my one rep max for my bench has been 185 for one, but it was a touch and go. Um, I think I actually hit, I hit 182 in a competition, so that was, I guess, pretty good. Um, I forgot to mention, but my one rep max for my squat right now is about 330. I can hit 315 for two. But here's my bench. You know, I definitely think that I could progress 
you know, I would have progressed a lot better if I had just stick to a linear program instead of trying to do an intermediate where I'm progressing like week to week because I definitely think that I could progress, you know, every day. But I just, honestly, I just didn't know how to bench. So that's one of the good things about this, you know, intermediate program is that it gave me more bench volume. I got a lot more comfortable in these past couple months and my movement pattern got a little bit better. Here, you guys will see my elbows are probably a little bit flared out. I could tuck them in a little bit more. So I'll definitely give that a try next time. But I really don't think it's that bad. So next, moving on to the bent over row. So this is just a little bit heavier than the bench. So this is 160 pounds. Just doing a 3 by 5 like usual. Um, I really like doing these rows. But in the programs that I was running before, I didn't really have a whole lot of space for them. So I'm really excited that I'm able to work on them now. Um, I'm... You know, I'm not using too crazy of a weight because I'm really trying to eliminate, you know, the use of leg drive and I'm trying to keep pretty good form. You know, these aren't like the cheat rows that Alex recommends that we do because like, you know, like he says, we're novices, just stick to one thing. Um, sometimes people, t you know, sometimes people don't like to hear that they're novices, but, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to be able to go into the gym and progress every day. Like, I really hope that I'm still in a novice stage, you know, because, yeah, like, yeah, Alex's numbers to go by are, you know, good strength numbers to help you determine whether you're still a novice or not. But in reality, you'll stop being a novice when you stop making progress from session to session. So next, I moved on to the accessory work. So in my gym, I really can't record outside of that area that I was in. So that area I was in is called the cave. That's where all the power racks and stuff are. Right now I was in the, I'm in the main area. I was able to sneak in a st set of these tricep extensions as you see here. Um, I have a hard time doing these. You know, I feel like I'm really like lopsided, but I was able to correct it about halfway through. So I'm doing 60 pounds here. I was able to do three sets of eight to 10, somewhere around there. So I'll definitely be going up next time. I was able to do the barbell preacher curls, but I wasn't able to record it because there's too many people there and they don't really like it when you record in the gym if there's too many people, you know, especially if it's outside of this cave area, like I said. But I did 50 pounds and I got around 3 sets, 8 to 10, just as well, so I'll definitely go up next time as well. So here I am doing the deficit deadlifts. I did, or right here I'm doing 255 pounds. As you guys saw there, I was putting on some chalk, and that's because the chalk really, really helps with your grip, um, especially when you're doing higher reps, you know, like 8 to 10 reps. As you can see here, you know, I'm doing the stiff bar. I'm not, you know, keeping my legs pretty straight, not completely straight, because it's it's really, you know, the stiff bar, to, not stiff bar, sorry, but the stiff leg deadlift. It's really just a stiffer leg deadlift. You know, it's not completely straight, but it's definitely a lot more straight than if you were doing a regular deadlift. So as you can see here, you know, this is pretty easy for me. Um, deadlift's definitely my strongest lift. You know, my current PR right now is about 430 for one rep. So right here, doing 255, getting 10, 10 reps pretty easily. I can really feel my hamstrings and glutes burning after this though. And you guys might notice here, but I actually use a hook grip. I don't really like using over under. I really like the hook grip. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for those movements. Last thing I did was core. You guys will see me do here. So this is how I put the plate on my back. So I'm using a 25 pound plate. This is my second set of these. And so for my first set, I was able to hold it for 45 seconds. And I probably could have gone a little bit longer, but then I rested a minute and a half and this is my second set. I barely got 30 seconds. I'm, I was dying. You guys will see, I'm like looking at my watch, like just hoping that the time will go by. On my third set, I barely got 30 seconds as well. So these are brutal. I'm probably gonna repeat the same weight again next time and just try to go for longer time. And then right after this, I ended the session with some face pulls. I just did it in the cable. Um, you know how people sometimes use the tricep push downs with the ropes. I used those and I did three sets of 20 with 60 pounds. So, you know, just trying to keep my shoulders healthy. All right, so that was the workout. That was workout A. Stay tuned for workout B on Wednesday. I'm going to be going through that one as well. 
That one's gonna be really fun because I'll be able to use the trap bar deadlift and do weighted chin ups, which is something that I really want to get, you know, I really want to get stronger at that lift. So for those of you guys who made it to the end of this video, it might be because you enjoyed the commentary or because you wanted, you know, the diet advice. So if you guys want to see, you know, more content, more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. And now I'm gonna go into the diet stuff. So currently, you know, I am 5'8 and a half. I'm weighing 182 pounds. I, not too long ago, I was weighing 172 and I kind of bulked up. Um, I'll show you guys, you know, what I look like. Or you know what, here, I'm gonna show you guys what I looked like when I started lifting about a year ago. So here you go. This is my fitness journey, as you can see. Um, I was pretty weak when I started, or I guess not that weak. Um, I think I started with, ooh, I can't even remember. I don't know. We'll make this, we'll make this another video. But anyways, back to the diet stuff. So I'm at 182 pounds right now, and this is a very easy way to calculate your maintenance. You know, it's it's pretty close. It might not be exact. For me, it is pretty exact. So Lyle McDonald, he's a big guy in the nutrition field. If you guys haven't heard of him, definitely check out his stuff. His website is bodyrecomposition.com. He's definitely up there along with Alan Aragon. How do I know this? Well, I'm a nutrition student. I pretty much just finished my master's degree in nutrition dietetics. I'm just waiting to finish up my research component. So I've been in school for a while and I know who the top guys in the field are. So if you guys have any questions, you know, just make sure to ask me. But anyways, so Lyle McDonald, he uses this very simple formula. It's to determine your maintenance calories if you're a guy, it can be anywhere from 14 to 16 times your body weight in pounds. So 14 to 16 calories per pound of body weight. I fall right under that 15, so 15 calories per pound of body weight. For me, that ends up being around like 2,700, 2,800 calories. And what I do then is I just subtract 500 calories from that to get my deficit. Um, you can also use his number, which is for calculating what to diet at, which is 12, um, 11 if you're a female. But 12 is pretty close to me. Um, if I do 12, it puts me at around 2,200 calories, which is like 2,172. And if I just subtract 500 from my maintenance, I'm like 2,200. So my deficit right now is going to be between 2,100 and 2,300. Um, I know I'm not really too worried about hitting the exact numbers. What I'm more worried about hitting are my macros, protein specifically. So what am I going to try to aim for? So normally, you know, you'd want to go for 0.82 grams per pound of body weight or one gram per pound of lean body mass. Now that can be a little bit harder to determine, you know, so 0.82 grams per pound of body weight is very, very easy. But now, since I follow a plant-based diet, protein needs are a little bit higher because you really need to get those essential amino acids, which, you know, aren't the highest in, you know, all plant sources. You need to eat a little bit more, around 15% more. So I'm going more towards like 0.95 grams per pound of body weight. So right now I'm going for anywhere between 170 and 180 grams of protein. So that's my goal there. Now for calculating your fat intake, you want to get at least 20% from your calories. It can be more as long as it's not, you know, some, you know, it's, uh, as long as it's not coming from really unhealthy food, right? If it's just coming from like potato chips, you know, or fried food or some other junk food, then yeah, that's going to have some negative consequences. But it, you can have a pretty high fat intake as long as it's coming, you know, from, you know, whole food sources, minimally processed foods, you know, natural oils. I know people always say eat healthy fats, but if you think about it, you know, what else is there besides olive oil and avocado, right? Yeah, I mean, you have other nuts, you know, right? Peanuts, almonds, walnuts, um, all those other things. But yeah, I mean, when people tell you, you know, eat healthy fats, there really, you know, isn't too much, you know? I mean, yeah, there are like some saturated fats that you can get. You know, from some animal products and you know eating those in moderation are fine so that's you know what I would do so for me you know eating at around 2200 calories for me getting 20% of my calories from fat would be around 60 grams but like I was saying you know 
getting anywhere between that and 80 grams would be fine for me. Um, it's actually kind of hard for me to get you know a whole lot of fat, so I'm definitely going to try to hit at least 60 grams. And then the rest of your calories just go into carbohydrates. You know, it's it's just the easiest one to manipulate. You know, when protein is essential and fat is essential, then you know carbs is just whatever's left. You know, and this is why you know a lot of people tend to think that carbs are bad because when someone goes on a diet, the first thing you do is you cut the carbs. You know, and that's why people think that carbs are bad. But in reality, you know, they're not. It's just that, you know, you don't want to mess with the protein anymore and you don't want to mess with the fat. So the only thing you can really lower is your carbohydrates, you know, unless, you know, you are having a really high fat diet, then yeah, you can cut the fat in there too. But normally what people will do is they'll cut the carbs. So what's my goal with this diet? My goal is to diet down. You know, I really want to hit underneath 170 because I want to I want to get pretty lean and then just do a lean bulk for a while but what I might end up doing is just trying to diet for like two months lose eight to ten pounds and then recomp the rest of the way but I'm not really sure you know it would be really nice to drop down to around 12% body fat no lower than that why because I like to eat food and I like to lift heavy you know um, I don't want to be shredded and not be able to perform in the gym because that's what I love to do you know I'm not I don't live because of how I want to look I live because I enjoy making progress in the gym and I enjoy that feeling of getting stronger like I was saying you know the reason why I want to diet down is so that I can right away get into a lean bulk and that way I'll be a little bit more competitive for powerlifting as well because then I'll be pretty close to you know the other weight class um, I competed in a powerlifting meet about two weeks ago and I was in the 83 kilogram weight class and I got destroyed because I should not be in that weight class. So that'll be, you know, it'll be cool. You know, hey, if I can still, you know, perform well and look good at the same time, then why not? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you found this helpful, you know, comment below. And like I said, if you guys want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.